So, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, some uh, uh, a profile that we ran um, uh, with the help of the, the Sanger Institute. So, uh, first of all, I'll, get, I'll, I'll introduce who we are and then I'll um, explain what we did. Um, so, uh, Alexis, uh, uh, we do IO profiling. Uh, we are the IO profiling company. I, I believe we are the largest privately owned IO pri profiling company in the world, but uh, uh, I, w I wouldn't like to, to commit uh, to that. Um, uh, and uh, I, I founded the company about six years ago to improve the way uh, we did HBC in um, the semiconductor industry, but, but now we work a lot in, in, in various different H HPC um, industries, such as life sciences. Um, so this is uh, an overview of our two main product ranges. Breeze is designed to do detailed IO profiling. Um, it tells you uh, what your dependencies are and so on. I'm mainly going to be talking about Mistral, which is our new product uh, that we developed with uh, the RMIT department initially um, to do very lightweight hotspot detection on the whole cluster. Um, the, the headline was to protect the storage against rogue jobs with very bad I.O. patterns, um, but uh, almost a side effect of, of, of building that tool means that we can use it to profile um, jobs. You can, you can uh, increase the amount of information you get and so you can actually get a very good understanding of what the I.O. patterns are of, of, of any job. And this is uh, one example of the, the, kind of, the kind of job I'm talking about. This is actually a software build um, and uh, it's been set up here. It's, they're supposed to, the, the, the policy within the company is to use um, local storage for temporary files, uh, but this clearly is not. Uh, you can see the, the green bars here are the, is the data read and written. It's a bit faint, but you can, uh, you can more or less see that, that everything is read and written to uh, scratch space, almost nothing to slash temp. So this is an example of a job totally unnecessarily hammering the storage. The data here very easily would have fitted on local storage. Um, so, and whenever they run this in parallel, it, it really hits the storage very hard. Um, uh, a few more examples. Um, uh, you could, could be too much data by mistake. Um, one of our customers actually managed to crash their storage by uh, one user submitted the, uh, uh, a thousand jobs with a debug flag left on by mistake. They've been running something locally. Uh, and then submitted it to the cloud once they got it working, not the cloud, internal cluster, um, once, once they got it working. Um, and uh, they, in fact, did this three times in a week. So uh, the, the IT manager knows their name. Um, <laughs> similarly, um, it's very easy to do millions of metadata operations um, uh, by putting open and close calls inside the for loop instead of outside the for loop. So you end up in a, in a very tight loop doing open, reclose, open, reclose, open, reclose. Um, uh, very, very easy to do. The code looks almost identical. Um, this had got past peer review um, and, and then um, had very bad effects on the storage. Um, uh, and, uh, and then coming to something that... Um, uh, I'll talk a bit more about uh, too many small files. Um, uh, this is a very extreme case. One user created um, a million empty files by mistake. Um, very easily done. Um, so this is a screenshot of the pipeline that the Sanger Institute shared with us um, uh, in order to profile, in order to get an idea of the I.O. patterns in, um, in, in, a, in a real workload. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an open source um, pipeline um, from, the, uh, from the cancer group. Um, uh, I think uh, Tim from the Sanger is in the audience. Oh, oh there we go, he's standing up. Um, uh, and I think Peter's around here somewhere. So if you want to know more about um, the details of this pipeline, um, then they're much better people to ask than me. Um, but essentially, it's public pub public pipeline as a Docker image. You can all download it, a uh, public reference genome, and a public um, mutant sample, So, which sounds very alarming to me, not actually being in life sciences, but there we go. Um, uh, and a screenshot to prove that we ran it. <laughs> 
So um, this is what we did. We sampled the IO every 20 seconds. Um, we were looking for very coarse grain IO patterns here. Um, and we asked Mistral to uh, report hotspots that uh, included uh, more than 1,000 metadata operations, uh, more than a million read or write operations in various ranges, or more than 1,000 large read or write, reads or writes. Um, and, uh, oh, classic saving, saving graph in a different format. <laughs> um, uh, so this is one of the, the results showing reads by size. Um, the reason I've only got um, uh, one byte reads and uh, one byte to 4K reads on there is because those are the only that went over a million per second. Um, per, per 20 seconds. Um, the y-axis is number of reads in millions per 20 seconds. Um, so you can, you can see uh, uh, the red um, is showing one byte reads. There were quite a few instances where we were averaging more than a million one byte reads per second. That's really going to kill your storage unless you've got something like the IME buffer um, uh, uh, abstracting that away from the file system. Um, the period in between is when there just weren't more than a million reads. So um, we have we have uh, eight counters, not a hotspot. So uh, so we don't have any data on that uh, within the ranges we picked. Um, uh, so so really, we were expecting a lot of small reads. We weren't expecting this many reads that were this small. Um, we also looked at, ah, again, classic, saving in a different format. Never mind, it's still there. Um, <laughs> although time has, seems to have, have, have travelled in time and space. <laughs> um, uh, here we're looking at slightly larger reads, um, 32K to 1 megabyte. Um, we, here we're looking at thousands per 20 seconds. There's an order of magnitude difference um, between this graph and the, uh, and the previous graph. Um, but but actually similar, potentially similar data amounts. Um, uh, and you can see um, there are quite a lot, but nowhere near the, the level that we saw in the, in the previous slide. And finally, one of the things that Mistral does is uh, when, when it um, tells you where a hotspot is, when it sticks up a flag and says, this, this job at this time did um, went, went over one of the thresholds, it tells you which file it was accessing at the time. Um, and obviously, that's, that, that's a potentially very random um, uh, piece of information. But generally, rather like um, debug bingo, where you just stop the, the application at a random point, that's usually where it's spending most of its time. And so what we, what we find is usually one of the files that has triggered the, the, the high I.O., um, it's, uh, it's very indicative of, of where it's spending its time. And loads are, and, and, and all the triggers were very small temporary files. So we had a look in a bit more detail. Um, we found that seek operations, so random access, jumping around the, um, the file, um, not, not very surprisingly, that was on the large files. There weren't many, very many seek operations on the small files. Um, and the large files were the reference in the tumor ge genome. Um, uh, output files, um, uh, again, the, the, the most significant were um, f a whole bunch of fairly small files um, in the output directory, but the, uh, the real killer were the temporary files, so uh, 7,000 temporary files during the course of the operation. Uh, we're not, because they, they change uh, during, the, during the course of the, the run, um, I don't have any data here on, on how big those are, um, but you can see how big the reads are. Um, uh, this chart here shows the, um, the bytes read from slash temp per second throughout the course of the run. Majority of those are less than 100 bytes. So lots of very, very tiny reads from these thousands of temp files um, over the course of the run. So uh, what, what we found, it was we, we suspected that this would have um, some some bad I.O. patterns, so small reads, small files, we didn't really anticipate quite how many until we, until we looked at the data. So that's the, um, the end of my very brief presentation. If you have any 
questions about the data, um, then you can come and ask me afterwards. One of the engineers who did all the work <laughs> is uh, uh, sat in the audience. So, uh, so yeah, come and find me afterwards. Thank you very much.